Hello and began to you, Blackbird of the Blackbird Grimoire. Welcome to the daily forecast for Monday, September 23rd, 2024. It is the day of the goddess, the moon's day, nanny's day, the second of Libra, the 21st of Vine, the second of Raven, and the 24th of Tumandir. In our astrology for the day, the sun is in Libra, cardinal air representing justice. The moon is third quarter Gemini, mutable air representing a strong outside influence. Mercury is in Virgo, mutable earth, representing linguistic skill. Venus is in Scorpio, fixed water, representing passion. Mars is in Cancer, cardinal water, representing seeking security. And Jupiter is in Gemini, mutable air, representing questing. Saturn is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is to redefine dreams. Uranus is retrograding in Taurus, fixed earth, representing rebellion. Neptune is retrograding in Pisces, mutable water, which is spiritual awakenings. And Pluto is retrograding in Capricorn, cardinal earth, representing transformation. So our retrograde reminders for Saturn, reclaim your authority. For Uranus, reconsider how you rebel. For Neptune, reclaim your magic. For Pluto, reclaim your ability to regenerate. And for Chiron, restore the heroic spirit. We are in a waning gibbous moon, which means we need to absorb revelations. Uh, the Gemini moon, the do's are socialize, network, and teach. The don'ts are slow communication, manic distractions, and unventilated spe spaces. So we know the moon is waning and its placement in Gemini makes it want things to move along faster. Uh, so, you know, we have the waning. I'm, you know, not necessarily tired, but I'm not clipping along at the same space. I am diminishing. And then you have Gemini's like, let's get up and let's bounce around and let's go do things. Uh, so we have to balance these energies and it might help to devote our efforts to productive work and then allowing ourselves to taper down outside of those working hours. And of course, accepting help from others. That way you can uh, be moving with the waning moon, but you can also be uh, feeding a little bit of energy into the Gemini aspect of things, because uh, if it's not given direction, it will go manic and you will have distractions and all kinds of stuff. So uh, sometimes it's better to just actively decide, okay, I'm going to work with this energy. I'm going to flow in a way to where it can, it has a place to go rather than just fighting against it. Then for today's tarot card, we have death, death. Uh, which in this deck is represented by the Phoenix. Uh, it's a major arcana card, so think persistent, far-reaching impact. Uh, its number in the major arcana is 13, so you break that down to 1 plus 3, that equals 4, and then that equals stability. Now, the keywords for death are end of an era, permanent transformation, making way for the new. Very seldom does this refer to anyone's literal physical death. That is uh, a, a piece of hysteria. And of course, whenever you tell people this is usually just hysteria, it is exceptionally rare. You always have someone say, well, I knew this and such and blah, blah, blah. And then it did. And then they did die. And that was having that. Well, OK, so that was the exception that actually was talking about the end of their particular physical incarnation. The overwhelming majority of the time is just representing a kind of uh, very hard stop to a chapter. Things are going to change and be different. One thing is ended. Another thing has to begin. It is going to change you. It is uh, getting rid of some old things in your life to make room for something that's new. And that's something about change is that if we are really wanting to uh, create change, uh, sometimes we also have to create spaces in which that change can actually take place. Uh, for instance, uh, let's say you're, you're, uh, you're in need of a, okay, a new sofa. Uh, and you really need to have this new sofa. The old one is broken down. You need to try to clean it. It's not working. It really is time to uh, upgrade this particular piece of furniture. Uh, but you go out and you're not finding something. Either it's not something you like or it's not at a price point you are willing or able to pay. And there's just all of these roadblocks before you can make progress. Well, you get rid of the sofa. You know, you have some other seating arrangements in the meantime, but you get rid of that. You remove that. You have created physical space as well as a magical space for a new one to manifest. And then all of a sudden you are finding some options you can actually use. Now, it is it is an illustration, but I think it does a good job of uh, proving the point of that, you know, we have to allow these spaces to be created. And if we are stuck, if we're stagnating, it's probably because we have too much filled up around us in order for us to get to the place where we actually need to go, where things can change in a beneficial way. So uh, there's nothing wrong with having a good sorting out. And the, what the death card is representing is that sorting out taking place, whether we planned on it or not. Uh, so the situation has come to a head. You know, your 
your choices are um, are no longer the, the key factor in that. Uh, the time for you to have made choices on this particular road was before this point. And now, you know, life, fate, call it what you will, it, it is taking the reins and this is happening, whatever that thing is. Now for today's Celtic Triad. It's a long one today. Uh, there are three levels of honor price. One third the value of the agreement when one has defaulted on a contract because of something beyond their control. Three times the value of the contract when one has defaulted by their own volition or slothfulness and no malice was intended. Nine times the value of a contract when one has defaulted on a contract by an act of their own volition with malice intent. So, uh, the cause of a default should, uh, should be taken into account when assessing damages owed. Uh, you'll notice that in all three of these cases that damages are indeed owed. Uh, but the greater degree of choice in the default and the greater degree of malice involved, that determined the greatness of the amount that was actually owed to them. Uh, intent can be very difficult to prove. Uh, but dishonor is something that should be punished. And uh, if we are, you know, as you know, we see our civilization really struggling and, and in some ways collapsing down about our ears, we need to start making decisions about what kind of civilization we actually want to live in. Do we want to have something in which, you know, honor is redressed in a, in a pretty, pretty civilized fashion like this? Uh, do we want people to just get away with anything all the time? Do Or do we want to accept that uh, there's going to be accountability in life. Sometimes we'll be on you know, the wrong side of that, uh, but that it's all part of the necessary process of enabling people to have a system in which they can more or less rub along and live together. We should think about these things now, uh, because if you are not sowing the seeds for the world that you want, uh, someone else is sowing the seeds for the world that they want, or at least ones that, uh, that they think it will be benefit them in some fashion. So I would... I would encourage people, uh, don't be the sort of person who you just allow things to happen to you. Plant your seeds, plant your intentions, be part of the process. Because people who get left out of the process or who refuse to take part in the process, uh, they end up uh, they end up taking orders. They, are, they end up with a world that's just presented to them and say, you know, this is how it is. You're stuck with it. Deal with it. You know, the time to make your voice heard was really before now. Uh, so if you don't want to find yourself in that situation, or at least you want to minimize that possibility, being more proactive in life would be the way to go. Now, today's magical correspondences, they are on the theme of stability. The color is gray, the plant is lavender, the animal is goat, and the crystal is fiend. Uh, I, I chose the goat not only because it is one of the, the, the normal correspondences for this concept, but just because of the nature of the goat. The ridiculous little ledges they climb up on like it was absolutely nothing, and they feel secure, they're balanced, they're not getting dizzy, it's all fine, you know, and you have the picture of these two goats, they're about to have some kind of a tussle in what looks like a, you know, a, a peak of a mountain top, <laughs> but, you know, they are not concerned, you know, they have enough ability within themselves to create stability uh, to where, you know, the the terrain, other factors, all the things that might happen, you know, they're not, it, they're not being troubled by that because they know uh, they know they're sure-footed. And so that's a good lesson for us, to create our own stability, because the world is not going to trouble itself to do it for us. And uh, if, if it did, it probably would not be in an arrangement that we would find uh, pleasant or conducive for ourselves. And so we have to create our own stability. We have to uh, find that solid ground within our souls. And uh, that's going to require some work that perhaps people are uncomfortable with. Uh, people don't necessarily like things to be definite. They think that if they have something solid within themselves, and that means they're not flexible anymore, that they can't adapt. People have a lot of ideas that they have to deprogram themselves from. And I would encourage people to, you know, to look at uh, at these at these inner voices and just ask yourself, where did those actually come from? Uh, are you being influenced by certain segments of society that are you know, it's it's encouraging ideas that on the surface sound fine, uh, but when you get down to what it's like in practice, it is actually destabilizing things. It is destabilizing people within their souls, and it's making them feel guilty if they seek to create it or that they are missing out if they seek to create it. Something to contemplate. You need to be mindful of what is actually being allowed to influence you. Now for today's practice. Suppose you met an autumn goddess while walking in the wood. What would you say to her? 
And I asked this question, it's because uh, there's a lot of lore in which the gods, you know, they were going, wandering around the earth in, in disguise, essentially. And of course, there's nothing saying that they couldn't take on flesh or that they couldn't hop along in someone's consciousness and uh, be a fellow traveler. And uh, you, at the end of the day, you never know, uh, you know, when divine beings might be uh, taking a closer look for themselves and seeing what's going on in the earth. Uh, so not only does that uh, make it pay to uh, at least try to be more courteous to strangers, uh, but also think about, you know, if the person I was talking to, you know, if they had, you know, a, a God that was kind of tagging along with them that day, or if, or if a God had taken on that particular appearance, uh, does that change how we interact with them? And well, suppose we came to realize that, oh, I am talking to a divine being, at least, or at least that we discern that there's something a little bit different about this person, about this conversation. You know, are you prepared to interact in that way? Uh, not saying I ever have, not saying that it would be commonplace uh, by any means, but I'm just saying uh, that it is something that is not outside of the realm of uh, possibility and there is precedent for that sort of thing. So what would you do if it was you? So let's look at uh, what you think could be accomplished by yoking the energies of your natal moon sign with the moon's current sign. Uh, this is a, this is a combining energies because as I mentioned yesterday, uh, the energies that we were born underneath, they make up part of our being. And of course, we are always carrying that along with it. And it is that that is interacting with the energies of the present and current time. So thinking about how these energies can be brought into alignment, uh, things that go, goals that they might have in common, uh, complementary aspects that would enable them to uh, create balance or or to be able to uh, work towards a similar goal, although perhaps in different ways. Uh, thinking about this, I think this is a helpful way to look at astrology a little bit differently and also uh, bring it back down to earth and something concrete that you can actually wrap your teeth around. Uh, then for the sacral chakra, is, your, is yours balanced? You know, we are in Libra season. Balance is going to be coming up a lot. Uh, today's Hermetic Principles Correspondences. Um, what has your study of these correspondence relationships taught you so far? And then for the Witch's Pyramid, today it's the West Wall. So water element, emotion. Do you have control over your emotions or do they control you? More often than not, people's emotions are controlling them and it shows. Now for today's journal prompt, what do you consider to be the ideal and most effective way to both mundanely clean and to magically cleanse your bathroom? Uh, this is, uh, you know, this is about using the information that we have. This is about thinking about what techniques really suit us. And this is also thinking about what methods have been reliable for us. And of course, in order to know whether or not a method is reliable, we have to do it uh, multiple times in order to see if it has a consistent effect. And so incorporating this into our housekeeping, I think it's a way for us to uh, magicalize our mundane life and to start realizing that these things are not such separate sides of the coin. They're always interrelated. And uh, that will do it for today. Have an absolutely magical day, dear. I hope you have a good Monday and a good strong start to the week. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.